uh, to at some point, it, ex as an exercise in the term at one point, to, uh, to uh, calculate, to program the computer in C or whatever they're using, Java now, I guess, uh, to do Euler, Euler's method. And these are the equations you, these would be the recursive equations that you would put in to do that. OK, uh, let's try uh, an example then. So what would be a good color for Euler? Well, well, purple. I assume nobody can see purple. Is that correct? Can anyone in the back of the room see that, that that's purple? What? <laughs> OK. Sit closer. <laughs> so let's calculate. Uh, the example, I'll use a simple example, but it's not entirely trivial. My example is going to be the equation x squared minus y squared on the right-hand side. And w let's start with y of 0 equals uh, 1, let's say. And so this is my initial value problem, that pair of equations. And uh, I have to specify a step size. So let's take the step size to be 0.1. You choose the step size, or the computer does. Uh, we'll have to talk about that in a few minutes. Now what do you do? Well, I say this is a non-trivial equation because uh, this equation, as far as I know, cannot be solved in terms of elementary functions. So this equation would be, in fact, a very good candidate for numerical, a numerical method like Euler's. And uh, you had to use it, or maybe it was the other way around, I forget. On your problem set, uh, you drew a picture of the direction field and answered some questions about the isoclines how the solutions behave. All right, now, the main thing I want you to get, uh, this is not just for Euler's, talking about Euler's equations, but in general, for the calculations you have to do in this course, it's extremely important to be systematic, because if you are not systematic, you know, if you just scribble, 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 you can do the work, but it becomes impossible to find mistakes. You must do the work in a form in which you can check in which it can be checked, which you can look over it, find, and try to see where the mistakes are, if, in fact, there are any. So I, I strongly suggest, uh, this is not a suggestion, this is a command, uh, that you make a little take to do a Euler's method by hand. I'd only ask you for a step or two, uh, since I'm just trying to make sure you have some idea of these equations and where they come from. So first, the value of n, then the value of xn, then the value of the yn, and then a couple of more columns which tell you what the calcul or how to do the calculation. You're going to need the value of the slope. And it's probably a good idea also, because otherwise you'll forget it, to put in han, because that occurs in the formula. All right, let's start doing it. Well, the first value of n is 0. That's the starting point. At the starting point, x0, y0, x has the value 0, and y has the value 1. So 0 and 1. In other words, I'm starting, I'm carrying out exactly what I drew pictorially, only now I'm doing it arithmetically using a table and substituting into the formulas. OK, the next thing we have to calculate is an. Well, that's since an is the value of the right-hand side at the point 0, 1, you have to plug that in. The right-hand side is x, zero, x squared minus y squared. So it's 0 squared minus 1 squared. The value of the slope there is minus 1, negative 1. Now I have to multiply that by h. h is 0. 0.1, so it's minus, sorry, negative. I, I'll never learn that. <laughs> the way you learn to talk in kindergarten is the way you learn to talk the rest of your life, unfortunately. Uh, in kindergarten, we said minus. Uh, so negative point 0.1. Uh, n is 1 now. What's the value of xn? Well, to the old one, I add 1 tenth. What's the value of y? Well, at this point, you have to do the calculation. 
it's the old value of y to get this new value. It's the old value plus this number. Well, that's this plus that number is 9 tenths. An, now I have to calculate the new slope at this point. OK, that is 1 tenth squared minus 9 tenths squared. Gulp. That's 0 0.01 minus 0 0.81, which makes minus 0 0.80, I hope. <laughs> Check it on your calculators. Uh, whip them out and press the buttons. Uh, I now multiply that by h, and which means it's going to be minus 0 0.08, uh, perhaps with a 0 after. I didn't tell you how many decimal places. Let's carry it out to two decimal places. I think uh, that'll be uh, good enough. And finally, the last step, 2 here, add, one, add another 1 tenth, so the value of x is now 2 tenths. And finally, what's the value of y? Well, I didn't tell you where to stop. Uh, let's stop at uh, y of uh, point. Uh, let's stop at y of point two because there's no more room on the blackboard. It seems like an excellent, about approximately how big is that? In other words, then uh, this is going to be uh, this uh, the old y. Uh, plus this number, which seems to be 0.82 to me. So the answer is the new value is 0.82. OK, well, we got a number. We did what we were supposed to do. We got a number. Next question. Well, now let's ask a few questions. One of the first most basic thing is, you know, how right is this? How can I answer such a question if I can't calc if I have no explicit formula for that solution. That's the basic problem with numerical calculation. In other words, I have to wander around in the dark to some extent and yet have some idea when I've arrived at the place that I want to go. Well, the first question I'd like to answer question is, is this too high or too low? Is Euler, uh, sorry, he will forgive me in heaven, I will use him by this, I mean, is the result, well, let me say something first, and then I'll criticize it. Uh, is Euler too high or too low? <laughs> In other words, is the result of using Euler's method, i.e., is this number too high or too low? Is it higher than the right answer, what it should be? Or is it lower than the right answer? Or, God forbid, is it exactly right? Uh, it's almost never exactly right. That's not an option. Um, and how will we answer that question? Well, let's answer it geometrically. If, basically, if the solution were a line, were a straight line, then the Euler method would be exactly right all the time. But it's not a line. Then it's a, it's a curve. Well. The critical question is, is it curved, is the solution, so here's the solution, let's call it y1 of x, and let's say here was the starting point. Here the solution is convex, and here the solution is concave, right? Uh, concave up, a concave down, if you learn those words. But I think those have by now pretty, I hope, pretty well disappeared from the curriculum. Uh, call it, if you haven't up till now, what mathematicians call it, convex is that, and the other one is concave. 